you drive up and get to the top of Cadillac Mountain, you can see the sunrise. Be the, some of the first in the United States to watch the sun rising. Acadia National Park, if you were to list them alphabetically, is the first, the beginning. It's the beginning because the sun rises there before it rises everywhere else in the national park system. It's a place of great beauty. It's a place that was saved for us as one of the first, first pieces of land set aside because it was the playground of the rich and powerful. The Rockefellers and the Astors and all the big names of that era used to use the coast of Maine as their playground. And John D. Rockefeller bought a huge chunk of it, it on the little peninsula island where Acadia is located and gave that chunk of land to the government. That became the park that we have today, a beginning. That the Rockefeller family saw that this was a place of great beauty and needed to be saved. And it was the beginning of what started to become a national park system that spread across our entire country, saving and rescuing the places that were the most beautiful, the places that are sacred and have always been sacred to people of this land. A beginning. When Moses dies and the people are left there, not yet on the other side of the Jordan, still in the desert environment, they have to make decisions about how to begin again. What will happen now that the person that has been their leader, their teacher, their contact with God is no longer going to be there with them. What will they do? And into this story, we have slowly been hearing about the character of Joshua. We've learned that he is one Moses has been bringing along with him, has been teaching him the ways of God, has been apprenticing and mentoring him. And now God, speaks directly to Joshua. He tells them, tells Joshua, to be strong and courageous because you are going to bring the people into the promised land. And in the promised land, you will have to, and this is the part that disturbs and bothers me and we as a people have used that you will take that land from the people that are already there. You will destroy that people, and then it will become yours. These are the passages of scripture that we use so that when we settled in Massachusetts and Connecticut and Pennsylvania and North Carolina and Maine, we took that land. So I'm not sure how I feel about the whole project. Right? The project that Joshua is given to take over somebody else's land and destroy another people. But what I want to focus on is how do you take that next step? How do you begin again when something hard and difficult has happened? and you are tasked with a new role. How do you find the courage to be strong and courageous? So in our story today, how did the Israelites find the courage to cross another body of water? So if it had been any other time of the year when they had approached the Jordan River, they would have met a thin trickling stream that had spots where you could definitely just walk across. 
But they encountered the river after the rainy season when all the snow had melted and the river is huge and roaring. Now, if you are a people who've already had to cross one difficult body of water, what do you do when you're faced with a raging body of water again? How do you respond to that river? And I don't know if you've ever experienced that. When I lived in Casper, the river that runs through Casper, it comes from Montana and goes over into Nebraska, and there are all sorts of water rights about the river. And so some of the year, it is so dry that you can wade way out and go all the way across it. But during the snow melt, during the one rainy season of the year, it will be at the bounds of what the river is. And they give you all sorts of warnings. There are signs by the river as you walk along any of the paths that say do not enter because there will be dangerous currents. Because when the water is high, how it flows has led to many people drowning. So that's what the Israelites are facing, one of those rivers that any other time of the year isn't a problem. But they happen to hit it at the one time of the year when it will be difficult and dangerous to cross. And they're having to enter a place that they don't know what it will be like. But they can already see, because across the Jordan River they can see Jericho. They can see that there will be people in the place where they have been told that they are to go. So what do you do? How do you take that first step, begin that big journey? So what God does is tell Joshua to take one of each of the tribes and to carry the Ark of the Covenant forward. So instead of how Moses got them across, you know, staff, waters parted, in this case, the very essence, the symbol that they have of who God is and who God is to them, the place where they keep the scrolls that tell them the rules by which they have become a community, that is going to go first. And how do you think those, those people carrying the Ark of the Covenant felt? I mean, all of us are picturing, right, um, Harrison Ford right now and worried that it's going to explode and melt everybody. We don't get that. But we know that it's dangerous, right? Because of Harrison Ford. But the people have a hold of this ark. And what it says is, as they put their first footstep in, the water still. And as they walk into the waters, they part and form a big wall, and the land dries. And so when the people step into the river Jordan, what they meet is dry land. How many of you are willing to step into the water? To take that first step on a new beginning, a new adventure, something that you have maybe struggled with, something that you have longed for, something that could be slightly risky. How many of you are willing to take that first step and dip your foot in the water? This is one of those times in church life where every church in the United States is facing a new moment, a new time, a new way of being, a new potential for what could be. But it's scary and risky and unknown. We don't know what will be 
We don't know how things will be. But what the story of Joshua teaches us is that you have to get your feet wet. You have to try. And it may not be easy because I don't think when they thought about God giving them the promised land that they thought they would then have to have the battle of Jericho and the next battle and the next battle. That's all the book of Joshua is. One battle after another in order to claim that piece of land. I think they thought we cross the river, we get across the Jordan, we're in the land of milk and honey. And now it's all good. But it turns out that the land of milk and honey is just as difficult as the 40 years in the desert. So how many of us are willing to take that first step? To take that step into the water? To take that step into something that we know can be good and beautiful and wonderful, but is also risky and challenging and we don't know what the outcome will be. And maybe that's why we need to sit with those words that God says to Joshua. Be strong and courageous. To sit with those words. Because after he tells Joshua to be strong and courageous, God says that God will always be with this people. God will be present as they take the first scary, scary step into the water. God will be present when they figure out what it means to live as a settled people rather than a roaming people. God will be present in the ups and downs, in the good and bad. But be strong. Be courageous. Get your feet wet. Amen.